Greetings everyone, it's IT2, and today I want to talk about this book, 16 Ways to Defend a Walled City. Uh, I'm going to do this review a little differently. I'm going to give you my review of it, and then I'm going to review a one-star review on Goodreads that somebody else made. Because I wasn't even planning on reading this this year, I just kind of picked it up at Goodwill, and then I saw Matt's book reviews, did a review on it, said it give it rave reviews, said it was awesome. Couldn't believe how good it was. And I tend to agree with him. Five out of five stars. It's not your typical fantasy novel. It's it's set in a fantasy world, a fictional world, kind of like not typical fantasy stuff. It's kind of like more slightly past like the the era of like dragons and kings and knights and stuff. It's kind of more like a military, like a Roman kind of a place with like you know a lot of uh, bureaucracy and like you have to requisition supplies and there's like an emperor that has like this great seal so he can like stamp all the paperwork and it's like a little bit different than what you're used to but it's, really, it's like 20-25% comedy too so it's like what happens is there's this great city and it's shaped like a six star six arm star like a star David basically and like a, you'd see one of those, what's those video games? Civilization or something where you make like a, a military base and it's like a star shape. Because if, if you're trying to attack a city, you have these funnels you can funnel your enemy into. And you've got people shooting arrows down both sides, so it's really good to defend. Half of it's in the water also with docks that you can't get to. So these people show up and start sieging the city and they don't know who it is and it turns out it's these people that are trying to wipe out the culture of these people that live in the city and it's like uh, they have like names for them and stuff but it's like uh, it kind of uses a lot of racial racial racism kind of stuff like there's blue skins and the blues and greens I don't know if that means the green people have green skin but it did have the blue skin people they called them blue skins so I'm assuming there's blue skin people and green skin green skin people and then you got the main character who's a white person who he calls himself a milk face. Everybody calls people like him milk faces. So it's like the whites are the oppressed. Maybe the blue people are black, but they're just so black that they're blue black, kind of like we have. Because like, yeah, like, he talks about them being black at sometimes too. But then there's this girl named Sawdust, and she, I guess, has yellow skin. Because they said her skin looks like she had sawdust on her and she can't get it off. That's how, like, their racial, like, making fun of somebody so anyway you've got all these people living in the city he's actually an engineer for the military he's not like a soldier he's not like anybody super important but he's kind of important and the city gets sieged and he comes back from building bridges and everybody that's like a bureaucrat like a really rich nobleman they all like take off on the boats and they just abandon the city and leave it and the emperor is like on his deathbed he's like paraplegic nobody wanted to say anything so this guy takes it upon himself to like may put himself in charge and he basically goes and steals the emperor's seal and then that immediately gets stolen from him so he has to like have somebody trying to make a forgery of it and he's like stamping all this paper just pretending that he has the authority and people are following his orders because he's kind of getting stuff done the people that are left in the city all the poor folks and like the blue people and the green people don't like each other so he like puts those two different guilds or whatever they're called themes but they're like two factions in charge of certain things have them do different jobs then he's got like his own engineering crew is like one faction and he got these parks and gardens guys and the watch there are like two other factions that are all kind of together in the city so it's hilarious because eventually he finds out the people that are sieging him is a best friend his oldest best friend is like the guy in charge of it and he's like, why are you working for the... He actually gets caught. <laughs> and he finds out his friend's in charge. So he takes it... He goes back to his camp. And he's like, have conversations with the guy that he's at war with. But he doesn't want his people in his city to know that he's friends with this guy. So he sends him, like, coded messages. Or he'll have himself get kidnapped and taken over to just hang out with him for a while. And, like, talk about, why, what are you doing? Why are we doing this? And it's like, his friend doesn't want to hurt him. And he, if he does manage to siege the city, he's going to like let him go free and whoever else he wants to go free. So it's kind of like he has no stakes. But he wants to defend the city for some reason anyway. And this is like an historical account from his point of view. And he's like, there's this book. He says, there's this book called 15 Ways to Defend a Walled City. 
But unless you don't have any resources and you happen to find yourself in charge of all the rules, you can make shit up as you go along. I found a 16th way. <laughs> and if you're reading this, I must have it must have been successful because I lived to write it. So <laughs> that's what the joke of the story is. And then, yeah, he has to like make these catapults and he like makes round shot instead of regular irregular shaped rocks so they bounce and they start destroying people just tearing off limbs and it's just super deadly and he kind of gets disgusted with himself for having to do that and he has to like turn the catapults on his own people when they revolt and shit and then he gets news that they're going to send a, a fleet and he has to like get this old bronze chain lifted up out of the river to like keep the fleet from getting in and this girl Sawdust actually does a lot of the work and it's he's just kind of like saying stuff and people start following his orders and it turns out good but he's actually like a big coward stuff and he ends up like sleeping with his friend's wife and then she has a plot to kill him so he tells his friend his wife's gonna kill him <laughs> there's all kind of stuff going on uh, then there's a lot of like real engineering kind of stuff like sapping a wall and digging into like Minecraft kind of stuff it's like, really good um, so anyway Let's go to, I didn't set this up ahead of time, so let me just check this real quick. And there we go. Okay. So this book, I didn't realize it's part of a trilogy. I thought it was a standalone. But each one of the books is like a different person. So this one says, this is the story of Orhan, son of Sia Doctus Felix Preclarissimus, and his history of the Great Siege, written down so that the deeds and sufferings of great men may never be forgotten. So the second book uh, is called How to Rule an Empire and Get Away With It. So I thought he was going to like take over his best friend's empire and like add them to his city and then, but that's not what happened. And the second book says, this is how this, the story of how the city was saved by not to cure the professional liar written down because eventually the truth always seeps through. So this is like another city, I guess. Because at one point it says there's other cities being sieged because this guy's empire is like pretty much taken over trying to get rid of these people called the Rober, which is the, I guess that's the blue and green skins combined. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure what color the, the other, the, the sieging people were, if it matters. Maybe they're just like a mix of all other colors. And then book three is called A Practical Guide to Conquering the World, which is a story of Emilius Felix Boyanus, the younger intended and unintended consequences of his life, the bad stuff he did on purpose, and the good stuff that happened in spite of him. So, I want to check those out. How many pages are there? It doesn't have any pages there. I don't know if this guy's like the Douglas Adams of fantasy where he just writes like comedy stuff, but he's got like this other series called Two of Swords, which is kind of mentioned in the back. Also, this is an Orbit book, but it's smaller and it's like a really good size. I love Orbit publishing. They always have little snippets of other books recommended at the end. And he's got this engineer trilogy, which I don't know if this is, the writer is actually an engineer, and that's how he knew all this stuff about engineering. Fencer trilogy? That looks cool. So that might be good to read too. But this one has a review on it. Uh, community reviews. Allison Hurd. Let's read this review. This is what pisses me off um, about the woke culture and stuff. They, let me move my camera just out of the way here. Uh, they can't enjoy themselves. They can't, everything's like pisses them off. Everything is uh, toxic and, uh, let's read this. This was hot garbage to my sensibilities. I'm sorry, I know many find it funny or exciting or whatever. Please don't read on. I have plenty of problematic faves. So as long as you recognize the jokes come with the cost of being sexist, racist, queer phobic, and can find points to enjoy anyways. Good job you found joy in my art. Can you enjoy the things you like, blah, blah, blah. There was maybe one character that was gay. I remember he just said some, well, he was going to give a guy a woman to marry, and he said, oh, he doesn't like women. That's the only thing about a gay guy that was mentioned in this book. <laughs> they turned it into a queer phobic. Mutilation, rampant casual, unintentional slash thoughtless racism. Sexism and queer phobia. Mutilation, extremely violent and limited take on masculinity. War crimes. It's a book. There's no war. There's not no war crimes. It's just a book. It's not real. How how would you read Game of Thrones thinking war crimes make a book bad? Oh my god. POV engineer instead of soldier could have been great. It was great. 
Sawdust, if she'd been given any more thought, she'd have been the real hero here. Maybe. You could write a whole book from her point of view or the whole story, probably. The problems. I'm not even sure which is the most pressing, so in no particular order, sexism. Uh, beautiful things that need to be protect. <laughs> extreme violence and confined masculinity is defined by people who protect women in front of their peers. Minimize them to their faces. You can only think of them as mothers, daughters. Do they think people were not sexist in medieval times? Do they think everybody was like woke, like 400 BC or AD? This is gross. Women are whole people with all the same valor and depravity as anyone else. You can't keep that in your mind. Keep them out of your art. Don't even get me started on the terrible death of a sister as his personal backstory. Huh? I don't even remember that. That's not anything to do with the story. <laughs> it was meant to be an afterthought. It starts with not important to the story, then thanks for telling us Taint Gibbon. What? Racism. Holy shit. So this author tried to get past the racism angle by making white people the victims. If that's cool and interesting and she's like knocking him for it. So it's still racism but he swapped the colors and now she's saying he's like whitewashing it or something. The white person was enslaved, forced into labor, but of course managed to get to the top because of his own merit. Doesn't hate his oppressor, and in fact he likes milk, so the milk face slur is just kind of cute, and so many of his friends are black. I mean blue. You know, kind of blue you turn when you're covered in mud, and thinking how you're almost finally like them, except they're all taller and more athletic and attractive. Yikes. Hey, that was what I figured out. I figured out they're actually probably meant to be black people. Oh noble savage, oh kindly master, oh trauma to make someone badass. <coughs> this was revolting and I'm just about shaking with anger. Literally shaking with anger thinking about what absolute white nonsense this is. This is an abhorrent understanding of racial politics and identity. I'm living with this got greenlit. Greenlit? It's not a movie. Anybody can write a book. Look at this woman's face also. Let's look at this woman. Well, let's judge her giant lips and nose Jew probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't care about it. I like juice. Actually, I got a new employee at work. He's, uh, I think he's from Afghanistan. It's going to be pretty dope. Maybe he'll teach me Arabic because I tried to learn it a few years ago. The issue is several folks now trying to make that he's white in a black world. It's that this was published in 2019, written by a white British man who uses current modern day stereotypes about. He does kind of mention, like, Christianity and the U.S. Constitution being for the people, by the people, and of the people. Kind of like like it was like a cult that took off in his world or it didn't take off, so it didn't actually make any headway. It's kind of funny. He just didn't do it till the end, so it doesn't really tank the story for the whole time you're reading it. Um, that this white dude was able to deflect the harm of slavery and become an educated officer in the army, respected at meetings, and eventually leaders, both so outside the paradigm of racism and anyone in culture would be preposterous and reeks of white saviorism. Saviorism? Is that a thing? <laughs> uh, because of the viewpoint of its author and the climate into which it was released. I guess the White Knights are savior, savior complex kind of stuff. Don't come at me personally for my lack of understanding of history if you can't keep up with the news. Art has never lived free of context. And I will sneak suspicion that if you're Western and mad at me for stating this. Plus, because you've done similar things, I don't want to be seen as bad. I'm not here to make moral judgments on you if you're Slavic, not the culture, dark skin, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, queer phobic. There's exactly one mention of a gay person, and yes, he's a big damn hero, but the only time it comes up, the other dude in power rolls his eyes and says, in effect, those black people and their gross ideas. Uh, see, I don't think... Uh, it pisses me off when people, like, if you... Some of the books, you, like an author will announce a new book coming out, and you'll see people commenting, like, is there any gay characters in this? I don't want to watch unless there's a bunch of queer shit in it, because that's the only thing that turns me on, is just reading about gays and queers. I need a lot, of, a lot of queer stuff in this book, or it's not inclusive, and I don't like it. Fuck that shit, man. You can write about whatever you want. You have, why is there even, like, there's a whole category of, like, LGBT queer books. Like, if you... you <laughs> I'm just read romance novels that only have gay stuff in it. Like, who cares? Why do you gotta have it in, like, fantasy and sci-fi and thrillers and mysteries and everything else? 
This former slave knows like five languages, 600 years of minute history, and this capture citadel, and everyone around him is an idiot, and he single handedly thinks about another 300 years of technical relations instead of a month. Um, no. A lot of his, like, technical innovation, he had heard stories of things, and he never put it in practical use, or he'd, like, seen things, and he kind of knew how it worked, or he had, like, some of his history stuff, like, he knew about that chain being underwater, because they had to, like, build something, and there was a thing in the way, a piece of concrete, and he realized that's where, like, these two churches was, and people... There was a poetry thing that said, like, the chain looked like a rainbow. He's like, well, it doesn't look like a rainbow if you pull it flat. But then they actually pulled it up, and he's like, oh, you can see, like, a reflection in the water. It looks like a rainbow, and it's between these two temples that are based on the sun and the brightest star. So they didn't mean actually between the sun and the star. They meant between the two temples that were named after the sun and the star. This is pretty clever stuff. Um... What measure of man you are if you can't mention how at least three women wanted your dick inside of 300 pages? What's he talking about? At least three women. Nobody was, like, trying to sleep with him. Except that his best friend's wife wanted to kill his husband. And he was like, well, if you want me to take over his empire after you kill him, then it'd make more sense if we married each other because then they would be more likely to take it. <laughs> or whatever. I don't know what she's talking about. When you have a hand... Oh, this other woman that he's, like, kind of interested in. It's because it says later that he slept with his other friends <laughs> and got her pregnant. And then he died in the gladiator arena that they have. And then the girl is, like, his daughter, I think is what they were saying. Because he says... He says something about she was pregnant by another man's wife. And then he says at the end, like, hey, yeah, it was me. <laughs> it's pretty funny. The dude punches allies, kills his own people, betrays the trust of anyone who ever liked him in every way. Basically, bottom feeder scum as a human. I'm supposed to cheer for him? No. No. Glad you died. Hope your story burns. I guess if the intention was to remind people that most heroes are pricks, job well done, but I don't need a reminder of that. And I get the feeling that it wasn't actually the intention here, given that so many people liked him, the drama was supposed to see molding him in the mirror, can do with the center of time, and then uh, him, and then a little bat to them, and we're going to get some time to edit Lord and the hero, and I've only wished for that architect. Don't waste your brain cells or risk your eyes getting stuck mid-roll. Just keep walking because I don't care how high you can count. There are no defenses of this sort of thinking in the 21st century. One star. Nah, you're wrong. You're just wrong. <laughs>